In this guide, I'll show you how to set up an enshrouded server that doesn't require your computer to be running for people to join it. This way, you won't be using your PC resources and your game will actually run smoother, so you and your friends can play at different times and use different characters on the same server that's online 24-7. First of all, you'll need to buy a virtual private server. This is where we'll put all of these server files and host our server. There are many options to choose from, but the easiest one to use are these servers from Hosting Europe. They come in at a good price, they give a lot of resources and will allow you to install and configure everything automatically without having to mess with any of the command prompts or port forwarding firewalls and any of that complicated nonsense. You also get automated backups, so your game worlds will never get corrupted. There are four options to choose from. I bought the first three and tested them out. Simply choose based on how many players you want on your server. The first and the cheapest option you can just ignore, and Shrouded is quite a resource-heavy game, and these servers are just not powerful. It maxes out at just one player. So to get started, you'll need to get at least Game Panel 2, which allows you to host a server for up to four players, and this is what I probably recommend for most people, because Game Panel 4 is up to 10 players and Game Panel 8 is up to 16 players. When purchasing your plan, you'll have the option to buy for one month, one year or two years in advance. While one month is probably enough to get the most out of Enshrouded, you can safely grab a one or two year plan as well, because you can actually reuse these game servers for games like Palworld, Valheim, Minecraft, Rust, Terraria, and pretty much anything on this list. Also, grab a 10% exclusive discount with the code Emmet Reviews. Now, during the setup process, you'll need to choose your server location. Make sure it's as close to you and your friends as possible to avoid having any lag issues. Then simply choose a password for your admin controls and wait for the server to be set up automatically. That's the nice part of using hosting here. You don't actually need to do anything, it's all done automatically. And after the setup is done, click on panel access and the login URL. For the username, type in admin and for the password, use what you've created during the initial automatic setup. Click on create instance button and again. Here you can choose from any game you want and you can host multiple servers if you want at the same time for multiple games. But for this tutorial, we're going with Enshrouded. So I'll just name it my Enshrouded server and choose to update it after creation. And your Enshrouded server will start to download and install all of the required files onto your hosting server. So this is the part where you need to wait a bit. Even when this window disappears, it's still not done. Double click on your instance and after a bit of delay, you'll see that the files are still being downloaded and installed. But what we can do during this installation time is to make sure no game worlds get corrupted and create automated backups. Click on schedule backups and choose how often you want your backups to be taken. Now, this depends on how much progress you're willing to lose if something goes wrong. I usually go with hourly backups, so not too much gets lost in case something happens. Once you've added the trigger, make sure to click on add new task and set it for take a backup. Now, just wait a bit for all of the downloading and installing to finish. And once it's done, you'll need to start your server. And you can do so by clicking the button right here. Now you will be able to see how much resources of the server are being used. So just the server files alone are using up around 10% of the CPU power and 10% of RAM. Each additional player that now joins the server will take up more CPU power and more RAM before it, it runs out if too many players join. But before you start playing, make sure to set a name and a password for your server by going into configuration and shrouded server settings and changing the name as well as adding a password. And since your server is also creating backups every hour, you need to make sure you don't run out of physical space on the server. To do this, you'll need to automatically delete the oldest available backups to free up space for the new ones. To do this, type in backup in the search bar, go into the backup replacement policy, and instead of do nothing, choose delete single oldest or delete multiple. It's up to you if you want to delete just like several old backups or just one 
all this at one time. And finally, give your server a restart by clicking right here, just to make sure all of these changes are actually taking effect. Okay, now we're ready to connect, but the problem is if you use this connect to server button, it doesn't work as it should the first time you start. To fix this, all you need to do is grab your IP address by pressing copy, go into your Steam client, then click on view and game servers, click on this plus icon and simply paste in your IP address and boom, it appears right here. Now, if I click on connect, the game starts. And if I go to join, you can see my brand new server is up and running and anyone who has the password can connect. By the way, if your friends can't see the server, just give them the IP address and tell them to repeat the Steam game server steps, it will appear on their favorites as well. Keep in mind that you can control the server and keep track of your resource usage from this control panel. And if you decide you want to use this for another game, just click on the create instance button and choose a new game. Everything will get done automatically, just like with Enshrouded. So good luck managing your game servers and I'll see you in the next video.